Hi friends! Welcome back to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica and I am so excited that you are on this adventure of science with me. It's going to be so much fun. Last week we started looking at how climate change is affecting our oceans and we did a lot of really cool projects, one of which we are going to check in with today. And this week it's all about our ocean friends. So yesterday we went on a great low tide walk from Harbor Watch. If you didn't see it, you should check out their YouTube channel. And they've got lots of real cool low tide walks that you can go see all sorts of critters. We saw um, kelp crabs, we saw starfish, we saw barnacles, we saw porpoises, we saw these really interesting sandfish. So we got to see a whole lot of things and learn also about how we can go on these low tide walks and still be really thoughtful of the environment and the beach and the residents that live there. So that was awesome. Today, we are gonna look at sharks. So we have lots of fun and interesting facts about sharks, and we're gonna learn how sharks actually stay off the bottom of the ocean as they're swimming. It's a very unique thing to sharks. I'm really excited about that. And tomorrow we're gonna learn about squid and how the camouflage work in squid, which is also the same as octopus, which will be really fun to look into. So just a quick reminder, if you're just joining us the first time, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get notifications when we go live. And if not, you should check out our Patreon page if you haven't been there. You can support us at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. We're doing all sorts of fun science. Our next unit is chemistry unit, and I have some really cool kid-friendly chemistry projects that are very much on the wow factor. I'm so excited. All right, so the project I wanted to check in on today was our ocean acidification. So we set up two different oceans in these bottles. One is just plain old ocean. We put a seashell in there, and you can probably see that my seashell doesn't look much different than a normal seashell. It's just salt water that's in here, and nothing too much has happened. Now, we've done a couple projects about how carbon dioxide can actually cause water to acidify. We did that with our own breath. You should check out some of the videos in our YouTube channel. We did that with purple cabbage and we got to see it in action as it turned pink. So we made acidic water with vinegar and salt water. Um, and this is sort of a model of the oceans getting more acidic because of all that carbon dioxide. And you can see what it has done to my shell. Now this was just a little bit over a week ago, but my shell is pretty much gone. And that shows us how much just the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that's coming into the ocean and acidifying can really change life for some of our ocean friends. So those crustaceans are really depending on us to make sure we get that in check so that we don't keep rising the acidity of our oceans so that they can create their shells and they don't get eaten away, which is really important. Today, we are gonna learn about sharks. So sharks are amazing. We always have the Shark Week and Discovery Channel, which I love, and there are some really cool facts about sharks. For example, one thing about sharks that I got to learn about recently was if you feel shark skin, it feels really very much like sandpaper, and this is actually, it's like tooth-like little structures, and they all point towards the tail of the shark. So the shark can swim, and it helps the water, it helps it cut through the water better and feel less friction or drag or pulling on the shark as it's going through the water, which is really cool. And sharks have this because they are really, really old. They're prehistoric creatures. They're millions of years old. So they've had lots of time to adapt to their environment and find things that make their lives a little bit easier. One thing that makes the hammerhead's life easier is that their heads, so if you imagine the hammerhead, it's very, very flat, and their eyeballs are on the side of their heads, which is kind of a weird place when I think about like the eyeballs being on the side of their heads, but I guess for them this is totally normal. It gives them full view, so they can see 360 degrees all the way around them, which you can imagine is a really useful adaptation when it comes to being able to see predators who might want to eat you or see prey for when you're hungry, which is cool. But sharks also have this very unique feature. Fish control where they're at in the ocean by something called a swim bladder. And we've actually also done this project before. You can check out our YouTube channel, or if you want to, you can try it at home. If you put like a little ketchup packet inside of a two liter bottle and you fill the two liter bottle up with water and you screw the top on really tight, you can squeeze the bottle and inside that ketchup packet, just like inside a fish, there's a tiny little bubble of air. And 
as we squeeze it, we're squeezing that bubble of air. It's making it smaller and you'll actually see the ketchup go down. And then we let it go and then we release the analogous muscles in the fish and then the fish could go up in the column. And so the fish use air, they use these bladders to be able to use muscles to either compress it or release it to go either down as it compresses or up as it releases and it helps them manage their buoyancy in the water. Sharks don't have this. And sharks are also kind of heavy, right? Like if we just threw a shark in the ocean and it wasn't swimming, it would still sink. So one thing about sharks is they have to keep swimming. Part of that is so they don't sink because they're a little too heavy to actually be buoyant in the water, to have a neutral buoyancy where they just sort of hang out there. But they also need that water to go through their gills. That's how they're breathing. And they can't breathe by just sitting still. So they actually, swimming helps their lungs. It's kind of like our lungs breathe air in. They do that by swimming, which is really cool. So it's really important that sharks don't just stop swimming, which also means they don't ever get to go to sleep. They're always in a semi-conscious state when they sleep. They never get to have dreams like we do, which is such a tragedy. But the other thing about sharks and their buoyancy, so like one thing is they have to swim to keep going. The other thing is they actually don't have bones. So this is another thing that helps them sort of maintain their buoyancy a little bit better. They don't have bones. They have cartilage, so the stuff that's like in our ears. They have that stuff instead of bones that makes their skeletons way lighter, which is good because they don't have that swim bladder to keep them afloat. The other thing that sharks have is like this really oily liver. And that is what also helps them maintain buoyancy, which is what we're going to check out today. So for today's project, I have two toilet paper tubes for my sharks. I'm gonna make a shark with no oily liver and one shark that does have an oily liver and we can look at how that's a little different. I have six pennies, so I have three pennies for each of my sharks and that's sort of the shark meat and the shark brains and the shark teeth and their skeleton, all the shark stuff is gonna be in that little mass. I have a little tape so I can tape things on. And then I have my buoyancy bladders. One of them is gonna have nothing because my shark doesn't have an oily liver. The other one I'm going to fill with some oil and we'll be able to look in my lovely bin of water how that works. So the first thing we'll do as we check out our sharks and how they sort of manage to stay afloat a little bit in the water, we gotta give our sharks a little bit of weight. So I'm just going to tape some pennies on to each of these toilet paper rolls. All right, so this is sort of gives my shark a little bit of meat on it. If I didn't have that, I'd have like sort of like a baby dogfish shark and I really kind of want a great white maybe. Or maybe you have a whale shark that you're gonna make or maybe your shark will be a hammerhead. I'm curious, you should let us know in the comments. I'm gonna tape it on for both of them because anytime that we do an experiment, we wanna look at a control, which is like everything is sort of just plain Jane, it's all the same as the other one. And then we want to have an experiment, which is where we do something different. Just one thing different. Always just one thing different in our experiments. So for example, in our ocean, ocean acidification experiment, the only thing that was different was that we added vinegar to one of our things so that we could see, we can make it a little more acidic. All right, so I'm gonna tape on these three pennies here. Make sure you tape on the same number of pennies for each shark. Now, if you're really creative, you could totally add some shark eyes here. You could add some fins if you wanted to. You could do what you want, but now I have this lovely shark. It's got a little bit of heft to it. Um, I'm a little worried. My pennies are sort of, the tape is not taping on, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape around it too, just to make sure those pennies stay on. And because I'm doing it to this one, I'm also gonna do it to the other one because I wanna keep them as similar as possible. So that if I see a difference, somebody doesn't say, oh, but that's because you have the tape around it. If I have tape around both of them, we'll know that that's not the reason for our difference. All right, so I'm gonna put this guy on here, just like that. So I have two sharks. Now one of them is not gonna have anything special. It's not gonna have an oily bladder at all. So we're just gonna put in some sort of swim bladder, just like that. And the other one is gonna have that oily liver. So it's gonna use the oil to try to maintain buoyancy. And the where it gets this oil from is actually from the food it eats. 
So it likes to eat things that have a lot of fat in it and it can change that fat into the oils that it can then store in this liver. And it creates like a really oily area that will act to help it maintain its buoyancy. You can put as much or as little as you want, although do know that we are gonna need to put it into our shark. All right, so I'm gonna just very carefully zip this guy up. Now you can think in your head, I wonder why that works, All right? And I might encourage you to think about what happens when we put oil in water. Does it float? Does it sink? Does it do nothing? Does it mix in with water? Hmm. Curious questions. I'm gonna load in my oily bladder for this shark. All right, now in air, I can feel these two. One feels much heavier than the other. So if I was thinking and I'm making a hypothesis, I might make a hypothesis that because this one's heavier, I think this one will sink. And because this one's lighter, I think this one will float. And I could test that hypothesis. That's the great thing about science. We can make a little test and we can try it out and see what we think. All right, so I'm gonna pull in my water over here. And then we are just going to float our little sharks inside this water. We do gotta make sure there's no air in our little water bubble. I'm noticing that one of my sharks very quickly sank. Should I lift this up for you guys? Okay, good. One of our sharks sank to the bottom. One of them is on top, which is super interesting because my hypothesis initially was maybe this shark because it felt heavier out of water would be the one that sank because it was heavier. Whereas this one was not very heavy. It was pretty light. And that's the one that sank. That's really interesting. So then I might make another hypothesis. Hmm, did it sink because it didn't have any liquid in that bag? And we could even check that hypothesis because I could take some water and put the water in the bag. Just like that. If I wanted to just add some extra things just to check. This is one of those great projects where you can be curious and ask a lot of questions and also solve those questions as we go. You do have to act a little quickly though because our sharks are going to slowly disintegrate because our sharks are cardboard. The real deal is not quite cardboard. All right, so I can try to equal out the weight and see if it's a liquid thing by adding this liquid in the bag. And you should think in your head, I wonder what will happen with that, and I have some air in this bag. I don't wanna have air, because I just want liquid. That's kind of important to me, because I know that air, a bubble of air would totally float in this water. So, I do wanna make sure I don't have air in there. But I could pop this in here, and it still sinks. So it wasn't that there was a liquid in one, I think it might be that there was oil in one, in fact, I could test this, even without my shark, I could see what happens if I just let the oil sit in this water. You'll notice my oily liver of my shark is floating on top of the water. It's going up in the water, so it's not sinking. It's not a neutral buoyancy because it doesn't hang out sort of in the middle of the water. It has a positive buoyancy, and that positive buoyancy in the shark is gonna help lift the shark up in the water column, and it's gonna help it sort of stay afloat in a way that it doesn't need an air bladder, which is great because sharks don't have that. So that was our fun little project for looking at sharks, which are amazing creatures. I love them, I cannot believe they don't sleep. Some of them have 360 degree views, and that they don't even have regular bones like us just so they can be lighter to help them swim in that column. Tomorrow we are gonna check out squid and learn about how squid skin, we're gonna to put together our own squid skin in a fun project, and we'll learn about how that lets it evade its predators and sometimes even sneak up on prey really creatively. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna say goodbye to our YouTube friends. I'm so glad you joined us today. I hope we'll see you tomorrow. And we'll say hello over in our Zoom friends so that you guys can share your projects and your sharks and all of your amazing shark facts with me. We'll see you over there. Bye friends.